Located in the southwestern Pacific Ocean, near New Zealand, the area around the Kermadec Islands is particularly known for its high seismic activity and countless underwater volcanoes. And while the so-called Kermadec Arc has already been the scene of some of the strongest earthquakes of the last few centuries, scientists believe that the next mega shaking will not be long in coming. But what would be the consequences of such a cataclysmic event? How would it affect the nearest cities and how would it affect the rest of the world? The Kermadec Islands consist of a total of 80 small islands and reefs stretching over a distance of about 1,000 kilometers in the waters between New Zealand and Tonga. And while the archipelago is only sparsely populated, Ralul Island, the largest island in the group, is home to a small research station used by New Zealand scientists. Aside from that, the islets usually only receive occasional human visitors, and even then, mostly for scientific purposes. The resident issue is more settled when it comes to the animal and plant world. After all, the Kermadec Islands are known for the unique and largely untouched flora and fauna. Declared a nature reserve as early as 1937, many rare and endangered species live here, including various seabirds, sea turtles, and of course, fish. In 1990, the Kermadec Islands Marine Reserve was established, creating a 745,000 square kilometer protected area for the preservation of the marine ecosystem. But the Kermadec Arc is also known for something completely different. After all, it is considered one of the most active regions of the Pacific Ring of Fire. And indeed, this gigantic volcanic belt, which surrounds the ocean from three sides, is not only responsible for about two-thirds of all volcanic eruptions in the present day, it also serves as the scene of 90% of the world's earthquakes. The fact that, to put it mildly, a lot is going on here is due to plate tectonics, more precisely, to the movement, collision, and destruction of lithospheric plates, where lithosphere refers to the Earth's crust and the uppermost part of the Earth's mantle. At great depths, the turbulent processes cause the crustal rock bound in the water to be released by pressure and heat, and thus lower the melting point of the rock of the upper mantle, causing it to partially melt. As a result, the magma rises and ultimately produces a typical, usually explosive, volcanic activity. And while the Pacific Ring of Fire can look back on 35 million years of history, it includes an estimated 850 to 1,000 volcanoes that were active during the Holocene, that is, during the last 11,700 years. More than 30 underwater volcanoes are found in the Kermadec Arc alone, some of which have repeatedly shown signs of fiery activity in recent years. These include, for example, the Monowai, which is several kilometers in size, hidden 1,500 meters below the water surface, and last came to life in 2008. No less impressive is the caldera, the cauldron-shaped volcanic crater that lies dormant on the southeastern edge of Macaulay Island and has a diameter of 12 kilometers. But what would actually happen if the volcanoes of the Kermadec Arc were to erupt again, or if a particularly severe earthquake were to occur there? What danger does the Kermadec Arc pose? Well, Cornell E.G. Durand from the New Zealand Institute of Geological and Nuclear Sciences states that underwater volcanoes can release enormous amounts of lava and gases, but that this is by no means the greatest danger posed by the fiery outgrowths on the seabed. The truth is that the greatest risk is that underwater eruptions can trigger tsunamis, as soon as such a volcano erupts explosively, it displaces enormous amounts of water, which in turn smash in the form of huge waves within a few hours or even minutes on the nearby coasts. At first glance, you might think that the tsunamis mainly threaten the coasts of those countries that border directly on the source of the tidal waves. But in reality, the danger is by no means limited to these regions, because if a mega earthquake really does occur in the Kermadec Arc, its consequences could also affect places that are thousands of kilometers away from the epicenter. The underwater volcanic arc is located approximately 1,000 kilometers from New Zealand and the island state of Tonga. In this context, the New Zealand city of Auckland, with a population of over a million, is the largest and most populous city closest to the dangerous structure. And if an especially severe earthquake, measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale, were to occur here, Auckland would literally be shaken, with the risk of building damage, power
power outages and a collapse of coastal infrastructure due to a tsunami. New Zealand's capital, Wellington, which has a population of around 213,000 and is located about 1,200 kilometers from the Kermadec Arc, would also feel strong tremors. Furthermore, in an emergency, there would be hardly any time for the authorities to initiate evacuation measures. A tsunami can cross the ocean at an incredible speed of up to 800 kilometers an hour. That's about as fast as a passenger plane travels, and in our scenario, that means that the tidal wave would hit the coast of New Zealand in just over an hour. The 35,000 inhabitants of Nuku'alofa, the capital of Tongo, on the main island of Tonkatapu, would have to prepare for the approaching danger even faster. After all, Nuku'alofa is another 400 kilometers closer to the Kermadec Arc than Wellington. The damage that a tsunami up to 20 meters high would cause here within minutes is unimaginable. And although Australia is around 2,500 kilometers from the source of the hypothetical natural event, it would not be safe down under either. Cities like Brisbane and Sydney could then also be confronted with waves several meters high. But that's not all. Even on the other side of the world, more precisely in Japan and the Philippines, the triggered waves would still arrive in a moderate form almost after 12 hours. The west coast of the United States and Mexico, which are over 9,000 kilometers from the Kermadec Arc, would expect waves of up to 1.5 meters high after about 13 hours while in South America, even smaller waves would wash up after 15 hours. When to expect the next mega quake in the Kermadec Arc? Fortunately, the consequences just discussed are currently only pure, albeit unpleasant, thought games. However, we should not forget that the Kermadec Arc has already experienced several severe earthquakes in reality. This was the case, for example, on April 24, 2023, when the tremors reached a magnitude of 7.3 on the Richter scale. The situation was even more extreme in March 2021, when an earthquake measuring 8.1 on the Richter scale was recorded. This was one of the most violent events to hit the region in decades, and a tsunami warning was issued for New Zealand, Hawaii, and other areas in the Pacific as a result. Fortunately, the wave turned out to be smaller than initially feared, but scientific research has shown that this has not always been the case. Specifically, the team led by tsunami researcher James Goff analyzed fossil corals and sand deposits and found that a magnitude 9 earthquake may have occurred 600 to 1,000 years ago, paving the way for a massive tsunami. In view of this, the crucial question is whether something like this could happen again in our time. And the sobering answer is, yes it could. But would we be prepared for an emergency if it did? After all, the devastating tsunami of 2004 in the Indian Ocean and 2011 in Japan have made us frighteningly aware of the deadly force of nature. And of course, we must not forget the dozens of underwater volcanoes either. When a mega earthquake occurs, the movement of the Earth's crust can also have a direct effect on the activity of a fire vent. Once awakened, it can increase the local temperature of the ocean and thus change the ocean currents. The gases released, such as sulfur dioxide and CO2, could in turn acidify the water and affect marine animals. In the same breath, eruptions on the ocean floor can also create new islands and permanently change the geography of their surroundings. If we were to be hit by an extremely powerful earthquake, however, it could trigger a full-blown chain reaction, activating most of the undersea volcanoes in the Kermadec Arc. As a result, gases, lava, and mineral particles would be released at an unprecedented scale, which would inevitably have an immediate impact on the marine ecosystem in the entire region. Specifically, however, this would also mean that an earthquake of magnitude 9 or higher could cause a major shift in the Earth's crust and thus a change in currents such as the Humboldt Current or the Equatorial Pacific Current. And if, in addition, umpteen underwater volcanoes were to erupt simultaneously, they would release large amounts of CO2 and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, thus also having an impact on the global climate. In the same breath, the sea temperatures in the affected region would suddenly increase and in the worst case, interrupt the cycle of ocean currents. However, since these regulate the global climate, dissipate heat from the equator to the poles, and also distribute nutrients in the oceans, we can imagine the fatal consequences that such an event would have for the environment. But will there really be a mega earthquake in the Kermadec Arc? 
Well, if you believe the scientists, the real question is not if it will happen, but when. However, researchers disagree on the exact timing. While some experts estimate that such a strong earthquake is not to be expected in the next 2,000 years, others emphasize that the information available is simply too sparse to make a precise prediction. What is certain, however, is that either way, we would be well advised to be vigilant. After all, the next monster quake in the Kermadec Arc will really put our globe response capabilities to the test. And now you are welcome to test the clickability of the subscribe button. Just press your thumb and subscribe to never miss another video from us. See you soon!